Hi LEGO fans! Today I'm taking my first foray into the world of LEGO art. It's a little bit like painting by numbers, but being LEGO the paint is considerably more expensive. Other LEGO art sets include a Marvel Studios Iron Man, the Sith from Star Wars, a very classy Marilyn Monroe based on Andy Warhol's work, and a Mickey Mouse. But today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing Set number 31201, Harry Potter Hogwarts Crests, a 4,249 piece set from LEGO Harry Potter. Well, actually it's technically a LEGO art set. The really neat thing about this set is that it creates an actual piece of art which you can display on the wall. Whilst the 4,249 piece part count may be impressive, the math simply does not add up. The final image is 48 studs by 48 studs, which accounts for about 54% of the LEGO elements. I'm pretty sure the frame falls short of using the remaining 1,945 pieces. The reason for all the spare parts is that this set can actually build four different pictures. Yes, you could build the Gryffindor house crest, but for those of us with more refined taste, Ravenclaw is definitely going to be the preferred option. If your magical affiliation leans towards the dark arts, then you could recreate the Slytherin crest. Finally, we have an option for the ginger stepchild, the Hufflepuffs. Which one of the house crests would you build? To accentuate the building experience and channel your inner Lego master, you can download a soundtrack to listen to, or maybe not. The target audience for this set is the adult 18 plus market. That's further demonstrated by the price tag of 120 US dollars, 120 euros, or 115 great British quid. What the box doesn't mention is that if you were to buy, say, four of these sets, you can build a massive 96 by 96 stud version which recreates the Hogwarts crest depicting all four house animals. You'd have to be a fool to spend that much money on Lego, so I consulted the sorting hat for some advice on which crest to build. Difficult. Very difficult. Well, if you're sure... Oh, who am I kidding? Of course I bought them all. I'm going to build each of the house crests, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin and Ravenclaw, and then tear them all apart again and build the beast. Before we get building, let's break one of these bad boys open and see what's inside the box. Inside what could be mistaken for an overpriced pizza box, we actually have quite a nicely packaged product. There's a bunch of Lego elements as you'd expect, a premium quality instruction booklet, and this lift out box which contains some larger pieces. I really like the artwork encouraging you to listen to the soundtrack as you build. I'm not going to play the soundtrack in the video because I don't want a copyright strike, but feel free to use the QR code if you fancy a listen. So here's everything you get inside the box, and as a reminder we have everything here that you would need to recreate any one of the four house crests. The catch is that you can only build one of them at once and there will be a bunch of spares. We've got nine of these chunky plates which snap together to make a canvas. These are the height of a standard Lego brick, have holes along the edges for connecting together, and are nice and chunky. There's also a 134 page instruction booklet, a bag of accessories including a brand new style brick separator, a bunch of black pieces which are used to create the frame, and about 4,000 brightly coloured 1x1 plates. If I was playing a LEGO video game, this would make me a millionaire. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. We've got four of these sets, boosting the part count to 16,996. If you ever wondered what 16,000 LEGO elements laid out on a table looks like, wonder no more. Now all I need to do is cut these with Mega Blocks and bag them up into $10 deals. Before we get into some hardcore painting by numbers, let's take a look at how the canvas is put together. Basically, it consists of 9 Technic 16x16 16 16 bricks with holes on the side so you can join them together. Next, we flip the canvas over and start building up the frame. This is done by attaching 24 1x2 bricks with horizontal pins, adding some more 2x6 plates, some longer 2x16 plates, and then building out the corners to keep everything nice and tight. Grey plates are attached to the back to hold all of those 16x16 16 16 Technic bricks which make up the canvas together. Next we flip it back over and build out the edge of the frame with 8 1x4 bricks and then 12 1x8 bricks. More pieces will be added later to raise the height of the frame and give it a nice finish, but for now this is the perfect blank canvas to work with. Now the question is, which house crest to build first? 
What do you think, Sorty McHatface? Hufflepuff! And here is the first of four house crests and we're starting off with Hufflepuff. Build time on this was two and a half hours but I'd recommend you take a little bit longer and enjoy it. Hufflepuff House is named after one of the four founders of Hogwarts, Helga Hufflepuff. Yellow and black are the Hufflepuff House colours and are designed to reflect the element of Earth. In this case Lego used gold instead of yellow, a colour designed to represent wheat. Black on the other hand is emblematic of the soil. Hufflepuff's house animal is the badger which is thought to be the story keeper of the animal kingdom. It conjures up wisdom, strength, courage and persistence which are core values of Hufflepuff. You would expect the stripes on the badger to be picked out in white but unusually Lego have picked out a dark metallic colour. It helps to keep some definition among the other white features on the design. It also provides consistency with the other house animals as you'll see as we move through the pictures. Each one of the house crests features a relic which used to belong to the founder. This one features Hufflepuff's cup which later became one of Lord Voldemort's Horcruxes. The cup also has the dubious distinction of being the only object ever to have been stolen from a vault at Gringotts. Lego kind of got the colour wrong but aesthetically it looks pretty good. Aside from the badger and the cup the pattern is purely decorative. We've got a grey and white decorative checkerboard pattern and white and gold alternating stripes in the bottom right hand corner. Another nice decorative feature is this printed 2x4 tile. As with all four designs the frame is quite chunky and will stick out about an inch from the wall. Over on the back we can use these hanger elements to make it attach really nice and flush to the wall. You'll find two of these in every set and they do provide some flexibility when it comes to hanging the pictures. The instructions are designed so that you build the set square by square and then put them all together at the end. Of course if you want to be really flash you can put all of the squares together first. I wanted the speed build to look really cool so I butchered the instructions and stuck the squares together. Something I found really interesting is that Lego went for 1x1 round plates instead of 1x1 round tiles. This means we have visible studs on display instead of a nice smooth image. The good thing about the design choice is that we get a kind of textured finish. It reminds me of a tapestry and that is totally perfect. If you want to give yourself a real challenge and feed your inner OCD, try building one of these with all of the LEGO logos perfectly aligned. If you can perfectly align 2300 LEGO studs then I salute you. So we have a beautiful Hufflepuff house crest which wouldn't look out of place hanging next to a portrait of the Fat Friar. Who's up next Hatmeister? Slytherin! Is the completed Slytherin house crest which should take you anywhere between two and a half and four hours to build. The symbology is the same as the other designs. We've got a house animal and a relic which belong to the founder after who the house is named. 
That founder was of course Salazar Slytherin, a pureblood wizard noted for his cunning and determination. He was also hugely prejudiced towards Muggleborns and left this basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets to purge the school of them. The artifact in this case is Slytherin's locket. It was later owned by the Gaunt family, sold to Caractacus Burke, then purchased by Hepzibar Smith, and stolen by Tom Riddle who turned it into a Horcrux. After spending some time hidden away inside a cave, it was recovered by Regulus Black who ordered his house elf creature to destroy it. It was then stolen by a man with the dogful look of a basset hound, Mundungus Fletcher. Dolores Jane Umbridge confiscated it from Mundungus, and it was taken from her during a daring infiltration of the Ministry by Ron, Harry and Hermione. Eventually it was destroyed by the Sword of Gryffindor after taunting Ron with some imagery of sexy time between Harry and Hermione. But I digress. Slytherin's locket is nicely depicted against a background of green studs. We even have a few pale green studs to really make the image pop. Slytherin's house animal was the snake because of course Salazar was a parcel tongue. Again the house animal is rendered in black with some dark metallic elements to pick out some detail. When it comes to house colours, Slytherins are emerald green and silver. The choice of colours in the picture really does do that justice. As well as Salazar, other notable Slytherins include Head of House Severus Snape, the famous wizard Merlin who the Order of Merlin commemorates, and Prefect, Head Boy and all round bad dude, Tom Marvolo Riddle. It's a really good looking end result and looks great when mounted on a wall. But of course we've got two more house crests to build. So who's coming up next oh enchanted hat of sorting? Well if you're sure, better be Ravenclaw! So this is the third completed house crest and this is of course Ravenclaw, the best of all the houses. Ok I might be a little biased here. It would be totally forgivable to think that the house animal of Ravenclaw is a raven. I mean after all this does look like a crow. In reality this is meant to be an eagle. Ravenclaw's house colours are meant to be blue and bronze but as you see here we've got blue and silver. Blue is meant to represent the sky and bronze the feathers of an eagle. Ravenclaw is named after Hogwarts founder Rowena Ravenclaw. She was a Scottish witch noted for her intelligence and creativity. I can see what you were thinking when you sorted me into Ravenclaw Mr Sorting Hat. Just like the other house crests we do have the founder's artifact. This one's not particularly obvious but it is the lost diadem of Ravenclaw. Etched upon its surface you would find the famous quote, wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. It later became one of Lord Voldemort's Horcruxes. Tom Riddle revered the artifacts of the Hogwarts founders and several of them ended up as Horcruxes. In keeping with all of the house crests we have a checkerboard pattern in the top left and some decorative stripes down in the bottom right. Other notable Ravenclaws include Head of House Phileas Flitwick, Looney Luna Lovegood and Master Wand Maker Garrick Ollivander. I wonder where he went to get his wand. Although this conjures up immense house pride for me, I don't think it's the best of the four. In fact we've not even built all four yet. Go on then Sorty McHatface, well if you're sure, better be Gryffindor!
I truly did save the best for last is what you'd say if you were sorted into Gryffindor. Gryffindor is of course named after Hogwarts founder Godric Gryffindor. He was a great friend of Salazar Slytherin, but they did differ on their opinions of Muggle-born students. The village where Harry Potter was born, Godric's Hollow, was of course named after Godric Gryffindor. As a bonus fact, you can actually stay in the house where Harry Potter was born and his parents were brutally murdered. It's a good looking house crest and I imagine it's the one that people build most. Gryffindor's colours are scarlet and gold and reminiscent of the element of fire. We see both of these colours well represented within the house crest. We can also see the house animal picked out in silhouette. As you'd expect with the name Gryffindor, this is of course a lion. I don't quite get why Ravenclaw doesn't have a raven and Gryffindor doesn't have a griffin. Apart from some dark grey metallic highlights, the lion is all black. It's an odd colour choice for a lion, but the aesthetics kind of make sense when you put all four crests together. There's no mistaking the artefact from this Hogwarts founder, it is of course the Sword of Gryffindor. It was forged in the 10th century to Godric Gryffindor's specifications by goblin silversmith Ragnar I. The sword is fashioned from pure silver and inset with rubies. Apart from being a very attractive piece of bling, it's also very good at chopping the heads off snakes. It's difficult to capture the majesty of the Sword of Gryffindor in LEGO, but I do like the way LEGO have picked out some of the rubies using these red studs. This is a very good looking house crest, but if I'm totally honest, I do still like the Hufflepuff one. The end result, if you splash the cash on four sets, is a really nice collection of house crests. These were very rewarding to build and created some really nice time-lapse speed builds. As this has been such a long video to film and edit, I've been sharing the speed builds on Instagram. You can follow me at Jeremy Herbert Official. After more than 10 hours of work, I'm a little bit sad that we have to tear these apart to build the big one. Thankfully LEGO provides a new brick separator tool to make this as easy as possible. As you can see, this has a wide flat edge, perfect for pinging one by one round plates all over the place. It's all well and good, but sorting out all of those loose studs into colours is going to be a proper pain in the ass. I'm also going to miss having these house crests on the wall in my home office. After trawling Bricklink to see if I could just buy the parts for the big crest, I decided it was way too much hassle and just spent more of the kid's college fund. With another four of these in hand, this is turning out to be a really expensive video, but at least I'll have some nice art to display. So let's turn 10 or 12 hours of hard work into a two minute time lapse speed build.
Space in the studio was always going to be an issue, and without a fancy SLR with wide-angle lens, I literally had to raise the bar. Yes, you're getting to peek behind the curtains of my shabby little studio. With the camera suitably far away and the mammoth Hogwarts crest hanging over the edge of the table, it was time to add the frame. And here is the completed behemoth that is the Hogwarts crest. It took four individual sets, cost me upwards of £400 to build, but just look at this thing, it is amazing. The design alone used 9,208 LEGO studs, and with the other bits and pieces, we're probably looking at about 9,500 LEGO elements here. In the centre we have a nicely scripted H for Hogwarts, and that is surrounded by the four house animals. The Lion of Gryffindor, this time in its true colours, a slippery serpentine snake for Slytherin, complete with a tongue. The humble badger for Hufflepuff, who looks great with his black and white stripes. And what should be an eagle for Ravenclaw, but looks more like a crow. Come on Lego, you had one job. These are all wrapped within a heraldic shield, which looks like a breastplate that might be worn by a knight. Speaking of knights, check out the helmet at the top of the crest. It kind of reminds me of the Gryffindor knight. In the top corners we have some decorative scroll work. And at the bottom, a checkerboard effect, which is very satisfying to build. The end result is super impressive, and as much as I like the separate house crests, the big one is much more impressive, and with a width and height of 69 inches, it's going to make a very impressive addition to the Herbert decor. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that each one of these sets contains way more pieces than you actually need. So, as well as getting a bunch of really neat art, I now also own a Bricklink store. I mean, just check this out, there are thousands and thousands of green studs here. So that was set number 31201, Harry Potter Crests from LEGO Art. I do really like the art concept, and I can see why it would appeal to adult fans of LEGO. Building the sets is strangely satisfying, and I like the fact that you can hang them on the wall. This set should appeal to LEGO lovers and Harry Potter lovers alike. It's great that you can build your favourite house crest, if you're one of those builders that likes rebuilding stuff, then there's plenty of options. And that new style brick separator makes quick work of taking the studs off the base plate. If you're a really big Harry Potter fan, you can buy four of these and make all four house crests. Or if you completely lose your mind, you can build this monster. The main downside is that this gets very expensive very quickly. I've really enjoyed building these, I'm going to enjoy displaying them in my home. And I've spent entirely way too long making this video. If you did enjoy the video, then a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more LEGO Harry Potter goodness. Thanks a million for checking out the review, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next build video.